Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose qualifiers. Of course, this is the Open uh, qualifiers day one, and tomorrow we'll move on to the group stages. Saturday and Sunday, of course, we'll be coming live from the SAP Arena live in San Jose, downtown San Jose. But uh, let's just wrap up on Open Qualifier 1, Huck coming through. Um, the three players that we've got through from the Open bracket, as you'll see on the screen in a moment, are probably the three that we thought would come through once we, we dealt with the dropouts. Yeah, definitely, actually. Think about it, those were the three. Those were the three. Gummy Ho was definitely one. Um, Super was the guy that said if you weren't looking at him, you should be, because he definitely should be going through. And then it was always going to be a clash between Puck, Zanster, and Huck. And uh, Intense showed us that he could have been a contender too. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't beyond the realms of possibilities that he could have come through. 2-1 uh, win in round one against Caliber meant that he stayed in the upper bracket and then uh, obviously went down 2-0 to Super. Um, but also had a, a tough fight with Huck as well, and, and you know, it's his Achilles heel right now, and, and Intent showed us why, I guess, but uh, not to be this time, but he's certainly got a lot of experience from this. Absolutely, and uh, definitely for even, I mean, in the last month or so and before that, I've been traveling to all these big events, and the smaller niche of players like Intent in, in North America, I don't get to ever see. Uh, so it's good to see that there's up-and-coming talent like this kind of guy, and hopefully this continues, especially with the next year in WCS. Absolutely, I mean, uh, especially for the North American scene as well. It's been um, in the doldrums a little bit over the last 12 to yeah. 18 months, where people have been saying, "Well, you know, where's the next Scarlet coming from? Where's the next Hut right. coming from?" and so on. But actually, underneath it, when you when you look at it and you look at some of the newcomer tournaments that have been taking place this year, actually there is a dearth of talent there that actually can come through. And Intense has shown, even yeah. on a local level, turning up to an Intel Extreme Masters, he can compete. Yeah. I think it's really funny too, because it's something that I don't think a lot of people think about that there actually is. But if there was, I mean, if you think about all the tournaments we've seen this year from Red Bull, there's been so many fresher faces and, new, and newer players. But I think that's everywhere. We just really don't get to see it that often, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to move on to open bracket two now uh, with a whole host of new players. Uh, don't forget, this is actually a completely separate bracket. And we have three spots in this one as well. You'll see the upper bracket both advance and the winner advances from the lower bracket. Now, we should tell you there have been a few matches already played. Uh, predictably, perhaps, True has come through, although not quite as straightforward as we might imagine. Uh, beating Top, who's uh, you know a decent Terran player as well. 2-1 uh, to True in that top uh, part of the bracket. He'll play the winner of our next match, which we'll see in a moment, which is Symbol versus Harstam. Uh, Seed is currently 1-0 up. Digs our Seed, of course, uh, playing Cats in that game. And the all ZVZ has ended Predictably, again, not perhaps the scoreline that we were expecting, but Revival has made his way through. Sean, you said earlier on at the top of the program that really uh, True is the outstanding talent in this bracket and should, should go through. The next one isn't quite as straightforward, but it probably will come from Symbol, Harstam, Revival. Yep, those three. Potentially. Yep, those uh, three. And Seed and Cats may be the underdogs, but they're the wild cards too. That's the way that I would group this set of players in, time, in terms of bracket. True is by himself up there. Revival, um, Harston and Symbol very close, and then the rest there. Okay, uh, let's talk about this first matchup. We've got a couple of players going head to head who won't meet each other on a regular basis, but um, wildly different backgrounds as well. Symbol's been around for what seems like forever. Um, I, I think back to 2013, 2012, he had a run of second places everywhere. Iron Squid, Home Story Cup, I think, was in there as well. Just seemed to finish second everywhere. It was like the year's Kong, wasn't it? It was like yeah, yeah. Jay, Jay Kong yeah. from last year. Um, and, and I suppose we put Sue in that category this year. But he, he was one of those players. Always respected, always well thought of. Never a champion, though. Why? Um, I, I don't know, really, to be honest. I mean, it, it's very difficult to s look at one player and say all these second places, why is he not a champion? Yeah. It's, I think it's very difficult to do. Um, I think throughout his career, he's been one of the more creative Zergs that we've seen in the scene. Uh, but he struggled a lot recently, but it's good to see him back. I, I couldn't tell you why he never won a tournament, though. Yeah, but great, but great to see him back, as you said. Um, Harstam... It always seems to be the year of Harstam, but it never actually turns out to be the year of Harstam. So it's almost a similar question. Why hasn't he, why has he not flourished in the way that we perhaps thought he might do in the middle of 2013? Last year, we were talking about him as a, a future champion, as someone who really looked like he was going to step through and, and make the grade and join Fnatic at the right time. Look, look the real deal, you know, many yeah. times but still hasn't quite stepped up there. I, I, I look at Haasen and it's so funny because he sets the bar so high. He's like, yeah, it's the year of Haasen, I'm going to win everything. And that kind of setting is 
really unrealistic and that's not exactly what it's going to happen but for me looking at Hassan over the years he's developed so much and to be honest he's he's definitely one of the top European players now um, he started off as kind of a player that was good a little bit cheeky and kind of saying all these things and slowly developing but he's actually a really good player and like I said one of the best Europeans and it's going to be good to see him because I really think he can challenge for this lower bracket yeah, last year he was, um, I guess, on the fringes of things like Challenger and he was trying to break in and trying to make a name for himself. And he was yeah. a little bit cheeky in there as well, which is great to see. A bit of a personality, yeah. always like that. Slowly but surely he's made his way into the Premier League and is now an established top 16 yeah. player. So he has that with him, but why has he not performed at some of the external tournaments outside of WCS? It's a lot of experience, to be honest. Um, you know, the more tournaments he plays, the more experience he gets, he'll be much better at that. Um, playing in WCS, playing on ladder, playing on online tournaments, it's, they're all very different from each other. I guess the underlining thing is just be good at StarCraft, but there are small niches that come into it that can separate players. And I think next year in 2015, he can start to challenge in proper tournament settings as well. Okay. Uh, what do you expect from this particular matchup? It's the opening game, and we said earlier on with Hark and Gumio, it, it, when you have a tough opening game and it's the opening game, there's always two things to think about, not just the player that you're playing against. You're playing against yourself at the same time. How does he put that out of his mind and just focus on the match? I think just play it like another Zerg player. There's a lot of good Zergs in Europe that Hassan plays against a lot. You've got your Snooch, you've got your Vortex. So I really think at this point, play like you normally do. He watches a lot of StarCraft. He understands how this matchup works. Just go for it. I mean, never ever think, oh god, this guy is Korean, he's good, he's playing for a pro league team. No, forget about all that stuff. It's a Protoss versus Zerg game. I just, uh, I'd, I'd look across the referee at the, at the shirt, see Jinir, green wings, and then think, you know what, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> That'd be enough of me. I, would, I wouldn't need anything else. Yeah, I mean, all right, I'm plays, gone, I'm out of here. Playing pro league. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's a, a recent obviously addition. a top player. Yeah, uh, he's a recent addition to Jinir, green wings, but to be on the team itself is huge. Like. It, it's a privilege to be on those pro league teams. Overgrowth, King Sage on Catalina, the pretty much three stable maps that we've seen for a very, very long time here. So it's the perfect setting. These are the maps that you play very often. Protoss vs. Zerg all the time in WCS, in all these tournaments. It's everything is lining up. It's just if he can nail it. What, what do you what do you think of his PVZ in the way that he's played through this year? Because it's not something that really stands out as something you go, yeah, he's awesome at it. It's fantastic. But but likewise, I don't I can't think back and think, oh, he's terrible at it. No, to be honest, I don't think Hassan's really got a, a bad matchup. I think he obviously there's struggles in the game right now, but Protoss versus Terran, he's always had a very defensive style, which has been pretty good and stands out. PvP is just PvP, and Protoss versus Zerg is he's actually been pretty good. I think he's a pretty all-round player, to be honest. Okay, prediction for this one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go crazy on this one. I'm going to say a 2-1 Hassan win. Bam! That's right, folks. Red Eye didn't know what to say. That's right. I was Hustle. actually lost for words. I'm actually uh, pretty good at predictions, so you'll see this one come true. Okay, well, I'm not sat next to Artie Mictosis, so let's see how the predictions roll. It's a bold one from Apollo. Let's find out what our commentary team think of that bold prediction. Quite the wild one indeed. Um, I'm not sure how much this has much uh, is going to come to fruition. Uh, how about you, Todd? Um, a lot of a lot of interesting points were raised here as to you know how harsh them plays, mm -hmm. what he's gonna expect out of symbol uh, and all that, which I will cover uh, a little bit later. First, I okay. feel like we should talk a little bit about the maps, uh, overgrowth, King Sejong Station, and then Catalina. I feel like the especially overgrowth and King Sejong Station. I've always said it. You know, when you're Protoss against Stern and Zerg, you're always gonna wanna play these two maps at least in a best of three. Then there is always almost always going to be a bad map that you have to play. Usually it used to be merry-go-round, a lot more than Catalina, but nowadays, I guess most protosses have grown to hate it more than Catalina, so they veto it, and they end up uh, having to play Catalina. So it will be the third map if we went to a third map. And um, I feel like for Harstem to, to beat Symbol, he's, he's going to have to, to win 2-0, because if it goes down to Catalina, it means he struggled on one of the better yeah, maps, yeah. and it's just going to be so hard for him to beat somebody who's as good as Symbol, who's been around for a long time, They've actually played together in the past. I think it was back at Home Story Cup 6. So considering Home Story Cup ago. 10 just took place, <laughs> that was a while ago, yes. Was that the one the symbol actually took second place at? Because he, att he attended two, right? He took a second place at one of them, and then he took a third and fourth place at another, which was a little Let's bit Let's just later agree on. that he did good in both of them. He did good. It was the one he did good in. <laughs> he did good at both of 
It doesn't matter. All right, so yes, they have met before, of course, uh, but Symbol now being on Jinna Green Wings after recently joining, uh, previously being of MVP, um, it, it probably gives him new lease of life, really. Uh, it, overall, being on a team like Jin Air Green Wings, having the access to people like SOS on that team that you have access to in terms of practice partners, imagine that gives a Symbol a lot of power yeah. here. I mean, Symbol became really good when he was uh, back on TSL with a lot of strong yeah, Zergs yeah. in his team, like Hyun, who actually at the time, Hyun was the weakest Zerg in the team. Yeah, it's, it's, funny, it's funny to think, think that, that yeah. how things turned out, but all of the players that were on TSL, they all ended up, well, I mean, for those that didn't retire, they all ended up becoming those sick players. You know, you have Pults, you have Revival in there, Hyun, so he has developed a lot over the years. Oh, oh my god, it's it's the year of Harstam, definitely, oh. he flexes on camera. <laughs> no flex zone, bro. Uh, yeah, no flex zone. Oh god, I can't believe that happened. All right, well, uh, there you go. Uh, there are well, two what's, players. What's Simple's reaction? I want to see him flex too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll flex in game. I was talking a little bit with Harstam earlier and uh, asking him what he expects out of his opponent. I don't want to ask what he what he's gonna do, obviously, because mm -hmm, you know you yeah. never know. Like Simple, cool here or something. So I was asking him at least what he expects, and he was telling me that Simple, obviously, he plays a lot with roaches. He knew that. And actually, it was, I think, Artosis at DreamHack who just gave a really hard time to Symbol. He was, was talking, yeah, he was talking about a Zerg and saying that maybe Hyun. And he was saying that okay. Hyun has been using roaches way too much and he just doesn't work these days anymore. He's like, what's that, other, what's that other Zerg that uses roaches and never really does very well? <laughs> it's it's Symbol, right? When was the last time you saw Symbol do well? And I thought he was a little bit harsh on Symbol, as Aww. much as part of it was true, you know? Hmm. I feel like Symbol, even though he loves roaches as much as Hyun, probably, He's still one of those players that can make it work a lot of the time and that will do it very well. So yeah. I'm okay with that as long as you're in the mind of you're going to make your opponent run in circles all the time, have roaches left, right, and center in the main, in the third, in the natural, are constantly like taking down probes, being a nuisance in general. Uh, that's what we see from players like Hyun. Uh, likewise, also Symbol can do it very, very well. Uh, so let's see if Harstam's multitasking is pretty much up to the task, because that's the kind of thing he's going to have to deal with if he wants to get through this series. Alright, so we're getting into our first game in just a little bit here, between these two players. As you said, we are loading up onto Overgrowth for game number one between Symbol and Harstam to start things in this best of three. First best of three on our mainstream for open bracket number two. As we have spawning up to the top right hand corner, it is Symbol, pre uh, recently joining Gr Gene Air Green Wings from MVP. And down to the bottom left hand corner, it's our red Protoss. It is Harstam, representing Fnatic over here from Europe. Looking to do good, and normally he's always Singing away, yeah, driving away. It. Listening to Nicki Minaj. Probably, probably. <laughs> he likes Nicki Minaj a lot. All right, so what yeah. are you expecting to see from Harstam's side of things, really? Uh, you know, like, again, when I talked to him earlier, he was telling me about how he expects Symbol to play a lot with Roaches. And mm -hmm. also, he said that sometimes Symbol likes to go for something like Swamos very, very tartly. That would be a good map to do that. Goes into Vipers, and then later on, he does maybe this timing, you know, with uh, some Broodlords. There is a very short timing that you can do with Broodlords. Usually, it's, especially if you're ahead, that you can do it. If Definitely, you're behind, yeah. it's going to be very difficult. But if you're ahead, if you get a bunch of Broodlords, it's very short because if you let your opponents reach a certain amount of Tempest, usually just three, then they become very useless quickly. Yeah, it's, it's such a good point that you say uh, in terms of using them if you are ahead. Because if you're ahead, they're trying to play that little catch-up game, which means that they don't necessarily have the opportunity to even get a Fleet Beacon down. It's a lot of gas commitment, and then getting those Tempests out in time to be able to deal with it uh, means that you just might get rolled over by the time you even get there. So uh, I really, really like what you say about that. But you know, it's funny to think that uh, a, a while back ago, the only opener that was viable, or that we thought was viable, I can say, was the Forge opener. We almost don't see it ever anymore. Like, the only time nowadays you see a Protoss drop down the Forge is because he wants to cannon rush a Zerg that always goes hatch first, or most of the time to try and punish him. So that's also an interesting thing to think about. And uh, Harstam actually dropped, or just dropped down uh, one single gas for now. It just looks like a standard one gateway Nexus, but he's actually not gonna mine from the gas, so I'll make the Mothership Corp before he drops down the Nexus. So. Not the greediest you can do, but not 
the regular, you know, mining gas and star score and then get the Nexus. Yeah, I, I think this is kind of point for him, important for him considering he only now just saw the spawning pool going down. So he kind of needs to cut those little corners to go up against the triple hatch before pool opener that we've seen from Symbol on the other side of the map. Who, well, I mean, he just gets away with a pretty darn greedy build. So not too much Harstam can do again about that just yet. Harstam, I, I think he's very good at mixing it up against Zerg. Like sometimes he can do some very strong all with a lot of sentries. Sometimes he will play a little bit more micro-orientated. But I think preparation is one of his best qualities overall. Like I remember when he started doing super well in WCS when he beat Jack G, when he beat some top tiers like Bunny. It was all because of his preparation. So going yeah. into his tournament, he already knew he was going to have to play Symbol. He did his research. Even though there is not that much content out there to study from, he found some VODs here and there. That's why he knew here today what to expect, or at least he knows, he thinks he knows. <laughs> Let's just yeah. uh, end on that. And, <laughs> and from there, I think he's just going to try to do what he thinks could counter symbol very well. And I think we're going to find out in a moment what that is, and I uh, can't wait, man. A well, few links are on the way here for symbol so far, just to keep him good and in check. Uh, as obviously, across this three pool, op uh, uh, sorry, three hatch opener, does leave him a little bit vulnerable if he's not careful, so he's sending the lings out to try and spot everything on the top left as well. He'll be covering a lot of positions with those lings, making sure that nothing crazy is going on. Very important. Right now, Harsh in his main. He's mining on 1 plus 1 in the gases. So I'm starting to think something like a 6, 7 gates, maybe even 8. Okay. This might be in the books here. And you know, on this map, it's very easy to, to do that just because... You can't deny scouting. You, you see, he went for a stalker very quickly, and he's gonna drop down additional gateways in his main now. Yeah, and he's gonna boost up to a wall gate as well. Oh, Lynx might find their way to the main. And they hopefully don't for Harstam's sake, as stalker oh, God. starts poking away. If he Five cannot gates. deny the scout here, Symbol will know about this and get enough yeah. Zerglings and Roaches, but he's skipped on Roachron so far. That Lynx, oh, he's not gonna go far. Oh, okay, so he's actually gonna try and navigate around. He's gonna see everything. He sees extra gateways going oh, down. this is bad. He sees the lack of ga ma gas mining as well, so everything is lining up here for Symbol to just add on massive, massive defense. You know, how, you know how harsh is gonna adjust to this? He's not. He's, <laughs> he's going to drop some more gateways and go for it anyway, because YOLO is the year of Arsenal, man. Yeah. Uh, there's a spine crawler on the third base. Uh, the two bases aren't connected by creep. So I guess Harstam's going to try and plant himself there. How did he sneak there with this one probe? Well, I think it's going to work out okay because uh, it, it's in between the two bases. So if he can kind of cut off reinforcements from one another, that's so quite funny. Nice. Symbol is looking for a pylon on the left hand side of the map right now. He has no idea. He didn't yeah. have the watchtower because he sent all of his links across the map. So essentially, that scout kind of played against him. I mean, he has the info, of course, and he's getting a lot of Zerglings. But if Harstam gets a big round of Zealous to support his Stalkers here, it could be good for him. The Zerglings are about to hatch here. Symbol's gonna want to look for the surround on the Stalkers. Yeah, there's no speed just yet, though. Uh, so, oh, it kicks in for... Well, no, actually, no, it doesn't. They were just on creep. What am I on about? Excuse that for a second. As Spinecrawler tries to get into good position to Burrow, but goes down very, very quickly to these Stalker numbers. Oh, man, that Pylon in enemy territory here, even above the creep. Yeah, as I said before, without the creep being between these two bases, this was the perfect position for him to start striking. But again, he has to find a good spot before speed finishes up. He doesn't want those stalkers Can in the front symbol to get hold surrounded. Here? No road run. He doesn't have a road run. He's behind on supply. He finally drops down the road run. But I mean, you're about to die, bro. Yeah, it's if that third base falls, that's a lot of economy loss. And he's actually not going to take it down just yet. Uh, the Zerglings have pushed on in to try and keep it away for as long as possible. 35 workers overall to try and keep this going. Yeah, but 17 Zealots and 7 Stalkers. Uh. I guess it's just 42 Zerglings, 4 Queens, which are not even fighting right now. Uh. The Spine might help at the third base, but I think there's just too much by Harstam who can reinforce with so many units. There's so many Zealots, so many, and they've just carved up a ton of those gates. Zerglings already. Uh, I'm not sure how he's going to do this. He, the 15 Zealots now against these 38 Zerglings. Uh, the Roach Warren is not even complete at this point, killing off more and more Zerglings here. This could go very, very well for Harstam. GG, game number one goes to Harstam, <laughs> who is laughing on the other side of that screen. That was easy. What are you thinking, that? Just wow. a good old seven gates. A good old seven gate, man. I, I told you there is only one transition out of being scouted. You add even more gates and you go harder. You get going. <laughs> you get going. And yeah, so there was the transition from Harstam laughing a lot to now Symbol not looking too pleased <laughs> with himself. Wow, okay. A symbol, he cannot be happy after this. He scouted it, still chose to go the roachless way, which was a big mistake in the end. I mean, full Zerglings, unless he had something like 
8 to 10 queens, mm -hmm. which you're never not going to have in, in a game like this, there was no way it was ever going to hold. And uh, let's just make it clear that the, the, bra the how the bracket works is that two people advance from the winner's bracket and only one from the lower. So if you actually go out to the lower in the first round, you have a long, long road ahead of you during the rest of this day. Uh, and again, I would say that bracket two is stronger than bracket one was in its lineup. So um, yeah, Symbol cannot be happy at all with that first loss. Wants to bring this back uh, to a situation where he's moving through the winner's bracket and claiming one of those spots um, because <laughs> that is a whole lot easier than sticking around in this bracket. What, what, what should we call this build? A seven gate like this, like the very quick seven gate. Quite a few players have done it, but I mean, as you say, man, the good old seven gate because that was yeah. that was fun. That was he cut Fast probes furious. very early on the natural. He chrono boosted out, chrono boosted out warp gates, and yeah, just made way too many units. But I can't believe it. You know, like this is supposed to be much much weaker if you can't sneak a probe across the map mm. and proxy a pile on the way. Did it? I can't believe that actually <laughs> happens. <laughs> it was just in the middle of everything. All right, well, let's get into things. Game number two on King Sage on Station as we have spawning up the top left-hand corner as our red Protoss. It is Harstam who took game number one there uh, with his good old seven gate. Uh, I, again, I haven't seen it for ages, but... And spawning down the bottom right-hand corner. Really, really needs to tie this series back up, representing Janair Green Wings. It is Symbol, who I thought so uh, going into this series was going to do very, very well. Um, but so far, Apollo's prediction is doing all right. Can it go the whole way? And Symbol didn't even go for a road run up until he was pretty much already dead. Was, yeah. he, was the Artus is cursed in his way? Oh, <laughs> from another tournament. <laughs> Jeez. The it curse is getting stronger. It <laughs> intensifies every single tournament and prediction that is made. Oh, God. It just never ends. <laughs> Eventually, we'll all be cursed. <laughs> we won't have a job anymore. <laughs> all right. Well, for now, I simple. think Nexus first here would be a good option for Harstem. You see, he's already yeah, cured cool. another probe. Nexus first into Gateway after what he did. Symbol's gonna probably gonna be expecting some cheesy play again. So Harstem, maybe if he faked out some kind of aggression and then played greedy behind it, That'd denying cool. scouting as uh, as well. I think he will do very well against the symbol, who's probably going to be paranoid from now and probably gets a road run much earlier. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can guarantee symbol probably didn't come into this tournament expecting his first game to be uh, him being killed by a seven gate. That's just not really what he was anticipating. Um, as for now, Nexus first is on the cards. Probe's going to well, be moving I mean, out as well. I don't think anybody expects to go into a tournament to get seven gated and lose <laughs> to it, but yet it happens all the time. Yeah, I, guess, I guess I guess it does. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't really see that kind of quick of seven gate yeah. coming out too much every, nowadays. But it's not that good yeah. anymore. Like Zerks, I've mostly figured out how to counter. Like, at least you know the most standard seven gate. This wasn't really the most standard one. Mm -hmm. There was an attempt at hiding it, which in the end was uh, denied because Symbol saw it, but it's so funny that because he sent those Zerglings in and lost them, he couldn't see the probe across the map, which is also important. Yeah. yeah. Well, behind this, what does Harstam do in game number two? As you said, you've already outlined good opportunities for him to transition on into this game and make it very, very difficult for Symbol. But Symbol has likewise opened up very, very greedy himself anyway. It's triple hatchery again into spawning pool. He can get away with this. I mean, he saw the Nexus a little while ago anyway, so... Um, yep, yeah, he has an opportunity to play pretty greedy himself here as well. Harstam is going to have so much initiative here in this game. Uh, having scouted the opener of the of symbol and seeing that there is no gas early on, he's going to know that he's super safe for a long time. So he can choose to be maybe super greedy, take a very quick third base, or be aggressive again, be it with literally anything like a Stargate and some additional gateways, some immortal all in, you know, he's. Even though in the last game, you know, it was a seven gate with just zealots and stalkers, I think Harstem is very good with sentry timings, mm -hmm. with a lot of sentries, and um, with uh, yeah, just timings in general and uh, low units count. As even though he's good in macro as well, mm. he's the complete package, man. Just maybe not as much as Sen. <laughs> no, I just love that truly. expression, man. Ever since the way Apollo used it. It's a nice, it's a nice phrase. The complete package. I was expecting that. Oh, he said it somewhere at tournament. I think it was Dreamhack, and he almost said it fully. And then he, he said, said something it's the else. complete. He's the complete player yeah, or something. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, that's what's such a ripoff. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was a cheap ripoff. 
That was sad, but anyway. <laughs> Forge has actually been thrown down here by Harston, so maybe the opportunity a little bit of a longer game for uh, yeah, him. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking we might see a third base here just because mm. he made the Forge now. Usually when you open like Makes this, sense. this Nexus Gate, you get the Forge, you get the plus one, and then you start plus two, you get a Twilight, you get Blink. And the thing is, I really like this. Like, if this is what he's doing, it's so smart because Harstem made a stalker again to sell a story. He's like, yo, I made a stalker. I'm going to delay scouting from you. What do you think I'm going to do? Well, you're not going to be able to see it anyway. So if he's able to do what I talked about earlier, I really think he's, he's going to be in a good position in this game. Paul Zergman is going to end up running to the death zone, one of, one of them at least. As, um, I did have a little bit of a look around at the wall, but as you say, you know, with the forge down now, plus one on the way, he could happily throw down the next at the third wall in a cannon to extra fortify that location. Um, uh, the Overlord pokes on in and really doesn't see a huge amount. Is he going to see the forge? I don't think so. It's not even headed the right way. Oh, he turns. Oh, oh he's going to see it. That's a big deal here. Yeah, that was nice. He knows nice. that there is a forge with plus one. Didn't see any additional gateways. And actually, the Overlord and the Natural of Harstam here for Symbol had to pull out very quickly. He only, he only saw one of the gases. So right now, Symbol is really gonna, going to emphasize on trying to scout exactly what's up, especially in terms of third base. Wow, yeah, Lings are on the way there already. So at least they'll spot that. Uh, but behind all of this, there was no like inkling of super kind of powerful aggression towards that third base. There wasn't like a melee upgrade going down, not a flood of lings. Uh, so he's just got his Rotoran on the way. A bit of speed, uh, but it's drones, drones, drones here for Symbol behind all of this with his lair on the way. I wonder if there's any chance Harstam's going to do a, a... Oh, look at this. Yes, I was... Just because he's cut probes at 45, and I, I saw like the way uh -oh. he was dropping down the gates on the third mm. base very slowly and... With only one pile on there, that means he wants to have extra minerals for something else. He's dropping down five additional gates, a lot of gates to the initial three. He's not going to make probes anymore. He's just going to hit the timing yeah. with plus one. And like I talked about, with a lot of sentries looking to hit those force fields. But look at this. Symbol already getting a bunch of roaches. He can smell this coming somehow. Yeah, just making sure uh, the six overlords popping in just a second. I mean, uh, he's going to have so much room to open up the roach vats uh, to the point where he's going to have a huge, huge army. Ten roaches now in production, uh, or five or so to add on to already numbers that were there. Uh, but Pro oh. production starts again here. Yeah. Still no Twilight Council here for Harston, who I think he's going to be moving out very soon. I mean, ideally, though, for Symbol here, if he knew what's happening, he will probably get Burrow because there is no observer, there is not going to be any detection. But regardless, Symbol has to start squeezing out a lot of units. He started eight roaches not too long ago. So that's uh, eight, uh, eight, eight drones, drones, sorry. So yeah. that means. Just before that Link spotted things yeah. at the front. Is 68 drones at this point in the game with his injects a little bit too much? Look, he's even taking a gas on the fourth base that he's taking. Mm -hmm. You don't need that gas, you need units. Yeah, uh, and even if the roaches don't find a good ang angle of attack, five more drones! Five more oh drones God. on the way? I mean, yes, he's got more roaches in production as well, but uh, he needs to have a good army position to be able that, to deal with this. That's 20 more walkers for Symbol right now. You don't need to have that many more. Oh my God, he just went to 72. Army okay. supply, 79 for Symbol, 54 for Harston, but 14 roaches. I guess they are about to hatch. Why did he just start another roach warren as well? I think he wanted to throw down maybe a Hydralis or thing to... Maybe uh, he figured this one is going to uh, die, like he has like four scenes. Yeah, that where is dead. it? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, there's a lot of space control here in the potential, but he actually gets right on top of them, starts focusing some of them down that had a lot of energy, and goes in from the back as well to focus an extra one oh, down. Yeah, yeah. He got a fields. lot of force fields there with that. Force fields are negative greatly, and all of the sentries are going to start dying. There's very little of them left here for Harston. And the stalkers keep on powering forwards, but I, I, as we said before, you know, he negated so many force fields with that focus fire Big there. Big time ward, by the way. Uh, yeah, really slowing down a lot of this army, getting a few more drones here in terms of the kills, uh, but there's eight roaches on the way. It's funny to think that Harstam has already killed 11 drones, but Symbol, I don't think he even cares just because he had so many, so he's going to pull even more now, but Harstam is reinforcing with Zealots. He needs to be careful not to lose all of his stalkers. Whopping yeah. its sentries! He's looking for the force fields! Ah, uh, he needs to get those at the front if he can. But at the same time, the Zealots slowly filter through to the front. They weren't that useful against those drones, but now they're at the front there, trying to tank some of this damage up the force fields. Push some of these roaches like, up against this army, uh, but... The Zealots are trapped behind here for Harstam. The positioning was not great. Yeah, one or two of them not really being able to get into the fight at all. There's still a lot of roaches on the way. Some lings actually filtering through as well. He realizes that the Zealot numbers aren't that great here in the end. Even a trans fuse from one of these queens to keep some of these roaches alive and I think he should eventually be able to push this back with the links yeah. flooding forwards as well. 
Arstem's supply is plummeting here. He's lost all of his sentries. He's gonna have to escape with just the Stalker's Mothership Quarry going down is a big deal too. If he could have kept this alive, it would have been nice. You wouldn't have had to possibly have to remake it, lose 100 gas, and maybe have a photon of a charge against some sort of counter-attack. Symbol. he went down to 49 drones against 50 probes, and he's not making any walkers. He thinks that he's killed enough to finish the game. He's making only units. There you go. GG well played. Symbol takes game number two, ties it up 1-1, one, one. and I gotta say, those kamikaze roaches going in for the kills on those sentries, if there had been more force fields there... Kamikaze roaches. <laughs> <laughs> They're not bailing skylars. I mean, they had to do what they needed to do, right? They were gonna die at the front line, but they, they did their job. They decreased a significant number of force fields there with that focus fire. Uh, it was very, very important for him to kind of live on there. Harstim looking pretty disappointed here, talking a little bit with Zenster getting some uh, advice for the last map, which is going to be Catalina. You know, I talked about this. Uh, yeah. Having to win 2-0 of zero was very important here, because now he has to play a map on which it's very difficult to beat a good Zerg, to beat any Zerg, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh, I almost fully agreed with that, and then I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, I'm not falling for this one. Here's the proof that you don't listen <laughs> when I talk, because you just say, yeah, without thinking. At least I backtracked. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. At least I backtracked for a second. All right. So, uh, yeah, game number three on Catalina is going to be loading up in a second here. But Symbol looked good there. You know, um, we were kind of debating whether or not that was uh, too, a few too many drones. And it looked kind of, you know... It should have been, but just the attacks and the positioning in the ramp. And also, mm. Arstim kind of slowed down and turned around when the Roaches came back from behind when he saw them. Um, I don't think he should have. If, if the roaches, caution. yeah, if the roach, because he had to get in quickly, because yeah. obviously at this time, Symbol was only making units and he was catching up very rapidly in supply. Like for a moment, Arstem, I think, might even, have, might even have been ahead in terms of army supply. So uh, he turned around and that bought some time. Basically, what Symbol did was buying time and baiting force fields, which was very nice. And if Arstem didn't fall for it, he could have done better as well. But yeah, the positioning in that ramp is very, very difficult, man. The pathing. It can be tricky mm -hmm. when you force field and you have your, all your zealots in the back. Not gonna go well the fight usually. Yeah. Um, overall, uh, of course, a lot of those roaches ended up dying at the front. But just having the economy behind that to be able to re uh, reintroduce those to the world made it a bit hard for Harstam. You know, I'm trying to imagine what, what this discussion is like. It's like Harstam is talking to Zenster and everything that he says. Zanster just looks at him, he's like, yo, it's your year, man. <laughs> it's the year of Harstam. And this goes on it's for like, like the, 10 the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's the, the only advice he needs. What so. year is this? It's my year. What, what year is this? My year. <laughs> just keeps going. I'm like, well, okay then. If that's how you want it to be. Um, but overall, now, as you outlined, this could be pretty difficult here for Harstam on a map like Catalina. Uh, do you think he falls back to something like, um, like the kind of... Uh, more cheesier player of game yeah. one, or I feel like Catalina is a map just like Mary Garon, on which it's harder to take a third, and because of that, you're going to be a lot more inclined uh, to basically do a two base timing here yeah. and there. Maybe an immortal push, a good old soul train, you know, to maybe to set the score right. I set the score at two one for Harstim could be nice, but I mean, against somebody like Symbol who has so much experience against it, because Symbol has been playing for a very long time, he's mm. not one of those. Kespa players that switch over. He was already very good in Wings of Liberty. He's been in Codes multiple times. Um, I remember, actually, I used to visit the TSL house and he was practicing there back in the Broodlord Infester era and he was already doing very well. Not, not even necessarily with those compositions. So he's, uh, he's definitely one of those players that didn't get nearly, nearly enough spotlight for his skill, I mm -hmm. feel. Like if he had played a lot more tournaments, he could have been a lot more known in the scene and he could have done, you know, just a lot better in terms of overall achievements. Yeah. Well, 2012, I mean, uh, overall was his kind of year to, uh, of achievements, uh, having a lot of second places during that, um, during the Broodlordian days, as uh, you mentioned before. But for now, um, Symbol is now back at his chair. Just took a break there for a second, whilst Harstam was also kind of getting to terms with the ideas of what was going on in those games with Zansta talking these things through. Uh, and now one more game stands between one of these guys and then the next series, which basically the next series is an opportunity to qualify uh, straight into the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose as Harston practices his yoga. So flexing a little bit, man. <laughs> I guess I guess any opportunity you can get, you gotta gotta do it on camera.
But anyway, getting into game number three, as we have spawning on the left-hand side, winner of game number one, unfortunately losing game two as our red Protoss. It is Harstam, representing Team Fnatic, looking intense as always. And down to the bottom right-hand corner, it's our blue Zerg, tying the series up, representing Jyn Air Green Wings. It is Symbol with his Kamikaze Roaches. Roach, GL, Did he write FH. GL? Rather Did than an HF. FH. Kespa players have been disqualified for less than that, <laughs> Hilaris. <laughs> yes, yes, they have. <laughs> okay, by the look of things, with that pylon placement, I'm thinking some sort of gateway opener here by Harston. Maybe the same build as we saw. Uh, hey, it was the last game, actually. Oh, no, it was on Overgrowth in the first game where he went for. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I had kind of forgot about that. The seven gate opener wasn't with a quick Nexus. It was, it was with a, yeah. a gateway gas, then Nexus, without mining from the gas before. So maybe same thing. If he drops down the gateway now soon. I guess it kind of works out to have your warp gate tech up and running as quickly as possible. Um, By the look of things, regard. I don't think it's going to be a gateway. So I guess Nexus first into gateway will be the choice of Harstem here, which can be, you know, it can be risky. The thing is, he's facing a symbol that twice went for the double hatch and then pull. So a good reaction to that is either to play greedy the way he's going to do it now, or maybe to drop down the forge and try and punish. But Catalina, with all the space that you have behind the mineral lines of the natural, is very hard to cannon rush. Then, again, on every single map, there is like this SOS spot mm. where you can drop down two pylons and you're going to wall off a cannon inside and then cannon rush from there. Then again, I guess... Harstem didn't want to, didn't want the last game to go down this way. I was about to say, does anything really stop her symbol here from going for triple hatch? But looks like that's not going to be the case. I mean, he even scouted out for proxy gates in his main base with the drum just before. Uh, so uh, he is a little bit cautious against Harstem here, but he loves his triple hatch before pull. Yeah. He really does. That's interesting, actually. I never thought about this, like a proxy on this map. You know, you just scout the edge of the creep and then you. Kind of skirt to, to know, around. Yeah, to know where the Zerg is and then you get uh, gateways in the main. But I guess Overlords, it will be very hard for Overlords to miss it. Uh, yeah, you must have happened to Symbol it. fine to scout for it. Yeah, it was a little weird when I was watching his drone move up there. But yeah. I want to meet the guy who proxied Symbol on this map and made him <laughs> scout for it. I just <laughs> want to shake his hands. <laughs> <laughs> you did us all a service. You made that drone lose like one or two trips. <laughs> yes. Well, pulls on the way now as Harston will eventually spot his opponent's location. Um, but of course, realizing that he wasn't up at the top anyway, kind of gave that away. Uh, but he sees this hatch done and he'll come in here and see the extent of a pull if he goes just a little bit further, meaning he'll know that it was a triple hatch again. Uh, so he won't be too pleased about that. But in the end, uh, Harston may have just come straight into this game with a plan anyway uh, that he won't deviate from. You know, last game I feel like Symbol dropped down the road trying not super early either, so he wasn't really getting paranoid. He still feels like he has his game plan uh, sorted out and that he goes for almost every single time. You know, he's going to take the double gas mm -hmm. uh, not too late uh, and then try and scout what he's up against. If he sees the seven gate, I'm pretty sure that this time he would drop a Rotron much earlier. But uh, overall, it really looks like he wants to get speed, you know, a bunch of links to defend uh, early on aggressions and then get a quick layer as well. Well. Quota boosting into that Stalker. Is that Overlord dead? Yeah, I think it, it may is. be dead, yeah. <laughs> it's about to face the wrath of the Year of Art. Right? Oh, jeez. It's about to learn. This keeps happening. Uh, it happened in our previous bracket as well. So, I was going to have to be very careful with those Zerg Wings at the front. They're being annoying. Twilight Council's going to be the choice here for Harston. Ah, DTs or Blink? Well, I mean, the Overlord got pushed away, so anything he chose here at this point is kind yeah, of well, good. It's look at the links in the natural. They're well, not only going to get a surround possibly on that Zealot and kill it, they're also going to head into the main. The Stalker comes back and actually stops shooting at the Overlord, so the Overlord's going to survive from now. Oh, he, our team could maybe wall off the natural, block it with the Zealot, and make sure that the Overlord never comes back in the main. I'm actually surprised that Symbol didn't try to go into the main with the Zerglings and send the Overlord at the same time, not spotting this... Um, this Twilight Council here, it could be really bad for him. Mm. Is it Dark Shrine or mm, Blink? Dark Shrine. Oh, snap. Oh, geez. Well, we did anticipate something happening, uh, and that's going to be the, the choice, basically, because in the end, this could catch Symbol off guard. Um, when will the lair start? Will Symbol get speed before, or will he start the lair? Because right now he has I no info. Oh, how much is he going to be able to see? He's not going to see it. That's, he's not going to see that. No way. No way. No way. Um, the thing is, he's is going to see absolutely he, nothing. So right now, 
I was Symbol has to guess. He stuff speed. Yeah, I was expecting that before. I mean, look at the past two games, right? His gas commitment has always gone to speed before the layer. So, I mean, it, why would he deviate here after seeing, well, not really too much? And he sees double gas at the natural. So he, he might not be too oh, fearful. And Harstem is setting this so well. Yeah. He starts a quick third base. I don't think... I really don't think that Symbol is going to be able to, to see those DTs coming. It, you know, there is already even a pylon for Harstem on the right-hand side of his base, ready to warp in those DTs towards Symbol's base. So unless he magically looks at that one Zergling mm -hmm. down, uh, down the, the, the ramp there with the pylon and sees DTs warping <sighs> in and walking across the map, he's going to be in so much trouble. And every single Roach extra he makes during that was gas gone away from the idea of a layer. So it slowly got worse and worse the more Roaches that got added on. There's the layer now on the way. Symbol is actually... Oh my god, he's, he's so convinced that there's some kind of seven gates or gateway aggression yeah. coming here. So many lings that aren't really going to do much if the wall just holds. It's um, DD time, Kailaris. Oh, he's supply blocked? Dun -dun. No! Uh, is well, at least he sees the DTs now, but uh, Spore Crawlers are on the way. If he actually got on top of those Spore Crawlers and tried it's to only, shut those He could have made nice. so much more DTs. He's only two right now. Yeah. He got Supply Locked. Okay, There's third a third one. third one somewhere. Um, but that's a lot of links and a lot of roaches. So does he just... I mean, he has to warp in defensive DTs, yeah, surely. Yeah, he's going to have to, but I mean... He's able uh, to warp in sentries uh, as well. Those DTs uh, are going to have a field day, man. Oh, he got the Spore oh Crawler God. in the main base as yeah. well. They're absolute butchers. Oh, they're just going to kill off everything. Okay, there's a lot of Zerglings already dying off. The, ro the, the Hostem could reward with buildings here. Yeah, he needs to. He needs to add on extra. Uh, the sentries are blocking there for a second. And that Yes, yeah, he still has some force fields. Those yeah. DTs, they're just killing every single unit that's there. Uh, across the map, he's killed only seven drones. Interestingly enough, didn't kill that many, but that means right now yeah. we have 37 drones against 54. Probes for Harstem, he's in a great position. At least the layer finished up, so he now has an Overseer to be able to clean up a little bit of this. Um, Harstem is going to drop down gates, he's going to go into Blink, he's getting his plus one right now. All he needs is a Robo, a lot of Blink Stalkers, yeah. and he might be able to close out the game with a nice timing on the third base of Symbol, or it's, even go into a macro game, it's really hard to him. Uh, it's really, really cool. I mean, the kicker is the third base, and the fact that for, for Harstem on the back of things, it's up and running, it's there, it exists, uh, without much deterrence at all from Symbol, who really wanted to to do something at the front, but got completely shut down just by the idea of, of, of Dark Templar alone. So 64 workers to 52. Harstam is in great position in this game. 14 drones are on the way. Jeez, Symbol really has to play a little bit of catch up here. Yeah, and actually Harstam is going <laughs> to lower the drones count here a little bit, sacrificing one single Dark Templar to kill quite a few. Plus two and Blink is on the way. A bunch of additional gateways were made. How many is he up to? I think like eight. Or actually just seven. So he could he could drop down a few more. The robos has to go down now. This is about the time, you know, where Burrow could be very helpful both in uh, in defending or even fighting in the middle of the map here for the Zerg player. Harstem is he's well saturated on three bases. I really feel like right now he has so much initiative in this game. He can literally do so many different things, but the best one would probably be to go up to something like ten gateways and do a big attack with a lot of big stalkers on the third base, in which case for the Zerg, he's going to be so hard to hold. I see his pylon going down here with this one Zergling. And yeah, this, this is going to be a really strong army. With that plus two finishes up. Very, very strong indeed. There's 11 Hydralisks on the way, though, here for Symbol as he buys time for his mainstay composition to really get up and running. Um, but they don't really have that many upgrades. I mean, plus one isn't finished for them. Hydralisk speed isn't finished for them. Symbol is so wary, by the way, of any timing that could be headed his way. Like, he was really scared, so he made so many Hydralisks. Mm. Rather than get roaches that just get force-fielded and die, that are like sitting ducks, he gets Hydras that can shoot even behind the force fields that could be thrown down. And Harstem, you know what? He's not going to rush it. He's just getting a Robo Bay now. He sent some hallucination to scout. He saw pretty much everything. He had to see, you know, he saw the Hydra, then he saw the Lair. Might even have seen how many units there was. Oh, he needs to deny the scout as much as possible from the Overseer, though. If the Zerg never sees the Robo Bay, then it's very hard for him to adjust. But the Hive starts even without seeing it here for Symbol. So I'm guessing he wants to add Vipers to his composition, which are always going to be good up until High Templars to counter them. Well, there's the Hive on the way, as you mentioned. It's... Now the Robo Bay just about to finish up, but Dark Templar still being a nuisance here. Trying to kill off a few drones where they can. One gets killed off 
Uh, that warp prison, though, on the right-hand side certainly has an opportunity to do something. There's not that much vision. There's so much airspace around the bottom right-hand corner of this map uh, that Hearthstone is really making the best of this situation. Yeah. I really wonder how this warp prison will be used, by the way. Like, usually in this situation, especially if you see the hive, which Hearthstone is about to, you want to get as many units as you can defensively, because you know that the timing with the uh, Vipers is going to come with Roach Hydra Viper, and it's so deadly. If you can max out, actually, Hearthstone is even ahead in supply right now. You don't need to counter attack, but I think Hearthstone might have realized that Symbol is not back at home ready to defend, so he drops down a few Zealots. Ideally, you want, you want to get the, the Hive here. If you get the Hive, you oh, pretty yeah, much yeah. run, but I don't think he has enough Zealots, and Symbol is close enough that he's going to come back and defend against this. Harstam saves a few zealots. That's nice. At least he is uh, being uh, trying to retain as many units as possible here. And he saw the high finish, so he knows that Vipers are starting now. And that in about, I don't know, like a minute, he could be attacked by Vipers mm -hmm. with energy and ready to abduct. And look, he's getting a Templar archive. He should have high Templars on time. He has Colossus tech. Harstam yep. still in the driver's seat in this game, even though he's now finally behind in supply. He starts the fourth base. I actually think that's pretty greedy. And if the game was even, you shouldn't do that. But right now, he might be far ahead enough that he, that he can do that. But again, that attack with the Vipers is going to be so deadly here. Uh, or yeah. It's going to be so strong. It's going to be the strongest timing that you can hit as a timing. I don't know if deadly is the right word here for symbol, just because I don't think he's in a great position in this game. He, his army composition, you know, it looks fine. He's going to have a lot of Blink Stalkers, plus three weapons is going to be done in the army as well. He even has access to quite a few force fields. Or Should have a third Colossus as well. Th third Colossus, nice. you say? Yeah, the third one is on the way here for Harstam. He's not going to have Storm on time, I think. But it's and about oh, feedback, yeah, this Colossus, really. this is so smart. Even if there is going to be a, an Overseer with Symbol's army, which it should, it's so nice because, you know, sometimes Zergs, it's going to be very hard for them to realize that early enough that they are not going to abduct those. You know, you're actually going to have to think about it in a fight where you already need to think a, about a lot of stuff. You're charging in. You're, you yes. have to react in the moment, and uh, that is going to cause him a few problems. Uh, two twos on the way, but also Ultralisk Cavern as well as Dream oh. Plans for all of this. Harstam is anticipating some kind of Brutal transition. Actually, that position is not great for him. The Templars were out of position. He's going to uh, pull back to them. Uh, he tries to get feedback, gets one of them down. Uh, there's oh, Symbol targeted the feedback. Templars. But also in all, all the energy for this has been used on Blinding Cloud to deny any damage from coming out instead of any pulls uh, during all of this. Harstam is was kind of stuck here for a second between, I guess, a rock and a rock, but... <laughs> but then he found a way out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, the blinding cloud expired, and now he, is he going to counter attack? He's still maxed out. He's getting Keeps Storm chasing. that's about to finish. He's getting one more Colossus. He was worried about Broodlot, so that's why he made a target. He needs to realize that there could be an Ultralist transition and get a second Robo so that he can, he, can, he can get some Immortals out. But regardless of that, I think that Harstam is about to hit the timing. Look, he has a probe mm. with his army. He's going to start proxying some pylons and go for, a, go for the kill, or at least try and do some damage here. Well, I mean, even when that Stargate going down, he was anticipating the idea of Brood Lords coming out, of course, but with the Ultralisk Cavern now there and good to go, it's it's a little bit different, really. Storm is finished up here for Harstam uh, and could kind of try and reinforce down that position, but he already killed the fourth base anyway. Yeah. So, he's on four bases himself. Yeah, so uh, Symbol's economy right now, as much as he does have a little bit of a bank, most of it is minerals. So it's kind of waning. He really, really wants to get that gas bank up a little bit so that once an engagement comes again, he can start getting uh, some of those Ultralisks onto the field. But here's the Fleet Beacon as well as the second Stargate. Yeah, so all that's missing is the additional Robo, at least mm. one or two, just in case there are Ultras, which in this game, there is going to be. Kytinus Blading already started, and now yeah. Symbol is going to start hiding a bunch of Ultralisks to his composition. I mean, ideally here, he would like to get a lot of Ultra, some Queens behind, and maybe some uh, Hydralisks. Uh, uh, not ideally, but like, I guess in a good scenario, ideally he would like to have an even better composition than that. But obviously here he can't afford it, because Symbol is only on 6 gases at a time in the game where he should be on 10. If he was to be in a good position, he would need to be on 10 gases now. Yeah, uh, and he's just not there right now at all. Not at all. He is maxed out, yes, even at 203 out of 200 supply, but uh, the Zealot attacks are never going to stop. Harstam's really taking a leaf out of his versus Terran book, and he's just continuing on with this Zealot harassment over and over and over. He was good at yeah. it in that matchup, seemingly good at it in this one as well. You know, it's funny, Harstam is scared to engage right now, but I feel like if he sent his Oracle in and revealed the army of Symbol, he would probably think, what? <laughs> just That's go. That's all you have? Mm. Roaches and Hydras and a bunch of Vipers, I guess three Ultras, he would just go in and kill him right out. 
Yeah, the harassment zealots on the left hand side not doing too much either here, but the main army, the main brother. Does Sigmund come back or does he base trade here? I, I looks he like he's just gonna trade. go. It looks like he's just gonna go, but I'm not sure how well that's gonna work out. Double Robo is on the way, by the way. Harsten finally spotted Where is those. It? It's on the third base. Okay, it's on the third. Uh, he actually forces the recall back there after taking the base. Oh, that's the base. right move too. I guess he could have sent some zealots in. Oh man, that gates. That gate didn't belong in this world. No, Having well. to kill his own gateway here, Harsten, to get out. Needs to. Oh, he needs to be careful. The okay, has a lot of storms really here. Has a lot of storms. Able to land up quite a few of them on the roaches and hydralisks. Needs to just continue that on. Look how fast the army has plummeted in terms of health. Symbol has to be very, very careful. A few high templars at the back actually get caught oh, in and get cleaved down. The entire army of Symbol, consisting mostly of roaches, cannot even burrow to regenerate here. He doesn't yeah. have burrow, so he's getting a few additional ultras. And even oh, though there the are no immortals. Forwards. If he can get an ultra here, that's a brilliant pickup for Harstam. Can't believe how this game's turned Very out. Very ambitious base here. What the? All right, I guess you could try that, but I <laughs> don't think it's going to stay up for too long. This army is so weak right now. So, so weak. Eight ultralisks are his ticket to try and keep in yeah. this game. He has a lot of money in the bank, but... Symbol is not even going to be given any time here uh. by Harstam, who's just... He's, he's shifted he's gear into, into uh, basically trying to kill his opponent here. Yeah, going for the win, basically. And if he kind of bottles up this army on this position, actually get a lot of that got dragged down, pull some of these forwards with the with the Vipers. So two Colossi end up falling. This Dark Templar's killed off the third base as well. Whilst this army's trying to hold on against it, there's uh, so many Ultralists there, but not able to get on top of the fight. And, well, those Ultralists should eventually be able to push this away, but Harsten behind this should have enough to be able to reinforce, yeah, he surely. he has so much economy. And even though Symbol's pretty rich, he can't even spend his money well anymore. He's only on two hatcheries, one in the, the main, DTs. one in the natural. The DTs are going crazy! Oh, There's man, no they're protection! Having so much fun this series. The DT is really the MVPs. Oh my god, uh, and all of these Ultralists are going to end up dying off to Dark Templars, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but right now, it looks like Sean was kind of right. <laughs> Which doesn't happen every day, so it's definitely <laughs> worth mentioning. I <Okay. laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, like, look at how many Zerglings are making at the third base of Symbol. That's a lot of Zerglings. I guess he couldn't select those Lavas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's like a whole army about to come out, but I mean, in general, he's just so far behind. He's got to do something. He's got to do something drastic. He's got oh, five Ultralists on the way. This Hello, guy. Uh, you got to dance. You got to dance, man. Keep dancing. No, that wasn't enough. I'm sorry. Uh, there is plenty of Zerglings here as well. Let's about. push on. Get to work, Oracle. Where is uh, Harstam's army? It's in the middle, not really doing he, too he much. He has a bunch of units at, around his third base. Like two immortals just came out there. He has some zealots as well. But now everything of symbols is locked in this location. So all of this oh, is Oracle, going man. to die. <laughs> uh, 13 kills already. Jeez. Well, may as well. Um, plus two armor could I be cancelled here, which would be a nice pickup yeah. at least. But this caused a lot of chaos out of Harstam. Yeah. You know, he's got units every, in the middle of the map. Archons are meeting Ultras. And we even, we even have a Colossus around the... the, the the initial base of symbol that got killed later on, so he's gonna warp in DTs, I think, defensively, and since there is no more overseer, this is gonna be it. Ah, uh, three ultras in the end. I mean, yeah, they got a little bit of damage done, but really how much how necessary was that Nexus at the natural? Not too much. It's this base that ideally needed to be hit because it is so healthy. Uh army supply is drastically in favor of Harstem here, while Symbol has nothing to his name, he's trying to yeah. build one swarm host. 37 army supply to 130, Symbol is going to have to accept that he's lost this game, and uh, yeah. one single swarm host, I don't think that's going to do it. Not at all, not at all. Swarm hosts can be good in sub situations, but one not in this one. As the last remaining Ultralist die, GG, Harstam takes g Series 1 in this bracket, 2 of the open bracket, and uh, that was a very, very good win there for Harstam. Very impressive player here, and that means he's gonna play either true or top, and true did win two one, so he's gonna face another Zerg, another Korean Zerg. Good job, Harstem, you beat a Korean Zerg, we're gonna give you another one in the next round, so <laughs> you can ends. show us some more. But that also means if he is able to beat his next opponent, he actually qualifies, basically. The two. It, oh, yeah, that's win, right. You win two series in the upper bracket and then you qualify for the entire Stream Master San Jose, and he just showed that he can defeat uh, these uh, top Korean Zergs. You know, that was, that was a very fortunate situation, though, for Harstam in the last game. You know, like, yes. going for DTs like this against the Zerg, who was convinced it was anything else but DTs. He was like, it can be a Robo, mm -hmm. a Stargate, or even just a lot of gateways. I'm going to do well against all of this. If it's DTs, though, I'm going to be in trouble. That's why usually Zergs, when they do what Symbol did here, they at least get one spore in the natural, just because yeah. that one spore would have helped so much, possibly prevented DTs from going to the main and 
he would have survived. Whereas now, he took some economic damage, he was still counter-attacking across the map with roaches that were just getting butchered by DTs and, uh, yeah. Well, there you go, and there you have it. That is our result as Harstam takes the series 2-1. And without further ado, let's hear from the winner. It is indeed Fnatic's Harstam. Thank you, James. Yes, with Harston, well done. Congratulations. Really, really good game. Great game to watch as well. We really enjoyed watching that one. Um, let's just talk about the match itself. Game one, seven gate. What was the thought behind that? This actually is a, a build by the not so popular player Verdi. Uh, he does it a lot, and uh, my t well, I guess my ex teammate Sanser told me about it. We were in the root house before this, and he was like, "How do I beat this?" I'm like, "Man, you just do this and this, and then you'll beat it." And I was like, wait a minute, it's really good. And so was that a response to the three hatch after you scouted? No, just like, uh, you always do this build, okay. it doesn't matter, right, you win. Okay. And as long as they don't get gas, it seems very difficult for the Zerg to stop, or they need to get like a lot of spines and stay on two ways. Uh, so yeah, thanks for Verdi for that one. Uh, yeah, then the second game... Didn't go as well. I Were you trying to do the same thing again? No, no, no. Okay. I did three base, and then I didn't build any probes on it. So, yeah, like, I, like I said earlier, I went full protos on this guy. Gaidal in, Gaidal in, and then DTs. Uh, but yeah, I think I was very far ahead. Like, the moment I stood at his rocks, I should have just won the game. But I ho hotkeyed my mothership core on the group with my sentries accidentally. So, my first force fields were no force fields. So, I was like pressing F, F, F. And I'm like, what is this? Like, is it bugging? And then I checked, and it was my mothership core just being in front of it being really annoying. And still, the fight was quite close because I think he overdrowned quite a bit in that game. Uh, so I was quite mad at myself after that one because it's really stupid to lose like this. It's a mad after game two, so you head into game three, mad with yourself. So how do you, how do you do that? Do you calm yourself down? Think ah, about Zonster spoke to me. Zonster is okay. very calming, collected, and we just talked a bit about what I would do. Uh, and Zonster checked what responses he did to the builds before, even though mm, it might not like. Even though I lost game two, it's still useful to know what kind of what he was going for. And he told me, and we kind of expected Roach Hydra on this map already. And after the game, after game two, we were pretty sure. And he didn't build any spores, so I just went for DT. And I think the game was over. I made it. I, I think I made some bad decisions as well in the end for going for the, some kind of pace trade, but the game was pretty much over. Yeah, already. I was going to ask you about that because there was a point actually towards the like last third of the game where he was actually ahead. He maxed out. He was actually 203, 200. Cheating. It was yeah. absolutely cheating. Yeah. Uh, so he was maxed out. He was ready to go. And then you're sitting there not quite maxed out, not quite ready to go, it seemed, building the DTs behind. And then suddenly you just decide, okay, I've had enough now. And you you engage, and it, we were a bit like, oh, that's not going to work out well, and then it was a bit iffy, and then it kind of worked out okay, but you were fairly even, and then he just maxed, about, maxed out straight away again behind it, and then your DTs came into play, and we were just sat there in, in awe, because the Oracle was picking stuff off with little, I mean, Sean was sitting here going, because he knew that's exactly what the Oracle was doing in the background, yeah. and the DTs were surrounding all the Ultralists at the same time, and suddenly, the game swings your way really easily. Yeah, I don't. I, I kind of felt like I had that game. Like mm, I de kept on denying his fourth base. I killed it like twice, I believe, already. So, I've, and I had my fourth up before him, which is something. Man, this is what you dream of when you think of a PVC. You're like, I have a fourth base before the Zerg, right? So I was feeling quite okay. But yeah, the base trade definitely was a a very big mistake. Uh, a mistake that could have cost me the game if I wasn't as far ahead. But luckily, I was far ahead. I was gonna say, I not luckily, I mean, economy-wise, you were doing great. So it was all based on the fact that you knew you had a great yeah, economy. It just was a numbers game. Like, yeah. And he was killing my gate. So I was, like you said, I couldn't remax as easily anymore. And I wasn't sure how big his bank was. Because even though he didn't have a forward base for a, vo for a very long time, uh, I didn't really kill a lot of his supply. So he must have had quite some money. Yeah. But I wasn't sure about how much I mean, he had. You had a great engage, but then you had a back off, and it wasn't the biggest of armies that you had left. Yeah. And then he remaxed very quickly. And did that worry you? Because when you, you sort of kind of, you were halfway between the two bases, and you were thinking, mm, maybe I'd go back, maybe I don't. And then when you went back, it was just lings everywhere. You had a, there was a Colossus quite out of place as well. And yeah. it looked a bit dicey for a little bit. You were like, oh, well, hang on, how did he get so many already? But it was actually okay. Yeah, it was okay. And I expected Brutelords and not Ultras, because I've seen him play Brutelord before and never Ultra. So I had, that's why I got the Oracle. I guess in the end it came in handy, but I had the Oracle and two Stargates prepared for some kind of Brutelord switch, because Muta wasn't really possible with his eco. So it just okay. worked out. So we move on through the next round. Congrats, because uh, Sean actually called this one, two, one to you as well. Yeah. Apollo called this. We all sat there going, <gasps> Really? He, he better call me winning next one as well. <laughs> then, uh. It's a bit tougher, this next game. I mean, is it? Almost. Who is it? True. Ah, okay. It's okay. It's okay? It's okay.
You're not worried. I like that. I like that. We were talking a little bit earlier on. We've had the joke. Obviously, last year it was the year of Harston. This year it was the year of Harston. Next year is the year of Harston. I think we've got the joke now. But yeah, yeah. joking aside, your improvement year on year has been terrific. So where do you rate yourself now in terms of, you know, are you top five in Europe now, right now? Are you best Protoss in Europe right now? What do no. you what do you look at in terms of goals? Uh, I would like to be next year. I would like to be the best foreigner uh, in WCS points, not just in my head, but like as well as to show something. Uh, and for now, I would like to end the year being the best protos. And right now, I think there's two above me, so I still have some time. I think Leo and Mana are still better, but I think uh, yeah, maybe if I practice hard. I'm at the root house for a few more weeks. I hope I can do it. It'd be good fun, and uh, hopefully we'll see you go all the way through. There's three spots, obviously, in this open bracket does I mean obviously makes it easier but are you even thinking like that you just think oh, I'm just going to carry on one game at a time try and get my way through and, and qualify as easily as I can yeah I think that that's I think if I win this one I qualify right yeah so that's the plan obviously we're just going to win through are you even thinking about San Jose right now in terms of the 16 and playing in front of a big crowd and that kind of thing no not really I kind of like that we start here because I I normally get a bit nervous uh, but here, because there's literally no one except for Sandster watching, um, I'm quite happy with that. Like, there's one guy in the crowd and he's cheering for me and helping me, so that's good. I think there's a few more than that, but um, <laughs> great to have you on the show, great to have you on the couch, and yeah. best of luck in your next game. Yeah, thank you. And uh, there we go. Year of Harstam continues as he moves on to the semi-finals of the upper bracket, and that will be our next game. It will be Harstam versus True. So don't go too far away. Make sure you continue with the social media. We'd like to see your tweets and all of your comments on Facebook as well, of course. Use the hashtag hash IEM. Make sure that you're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash IEM, and follow the official channel at IEM on Twitter. We'll be back in a few with more StarCraft 2.